In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In her book, The Ultimate Blessings, Rediscovering the Power of God's Presence, Joanne Lyon talks about the nature of hope. The nature of hope. She talks about the nature of hope that German theologian Jürgen Moltmann presented to us in his book, Theology of Hope. To a culture steeped in the death of God theology, this German theologian's work was transformative. In his book, Moltmann describes God as a God of hope, a God with a future. What's more, Moltmann says, faith and hope are closely connected. There's no hope without faith, and vice versa. Faith believes God to be true. Hope awaits the time when this truth shall be manifested. Faith believes that God is our Father. Hope anticipates that God will ever show himself to be a father toward us. Faith believes that eternal life has been given to us. Hope anticipates that it will sometime be revealed. Faith is the foundation upon which Hope rest. Hope nourishes and sustains our faith. Without hope, Moltmann concludes, faith falls to pieces. Without hope, faith falls to pieces. It becomes faint-hearted and ultimately dead. The Bible refers to hope or those who have it as joyful, righteous, glorious, patient, blessed, and lively. Hope is a vibrant, living thing. If hope is in fact a part of God's nature, then as we take on God's likeness, we must become hopeful. Jesus exemplified hope in his life and taught it repeatedly in his parables. To know Christ is to have hope. To know Christ is to have hope. In today's gospel lesson, we find two of Jesus' disciples who had lost hope. On this, our third Sunday of Easter, the lectionary takes us back to later on in the day on Easter Sunday. Today's resurrection story comes from Luke chapter 24. We only find this story in Luke's gospel. In chapter 24, verses 1 through 12, we learn that Mary Magdalene and the other women have discovered the empty tomb. They have shared the news of the empty tomb with the other disciples. Later on, the same day, as two of Jesus' disciples walk to Emmaus from Jerusalem, they are talking about what had happened that day. 
the two disciples experienced the death of Jesus. To the disciples, as we often feel when we experience death and loss, it feels as if it is the end of their dream. Where do they go from here? What will their future be like? As they are talking about the events of the day, suddenly a stranger joins them. It is Jesus. But they do not recognize Jesus. The conversation between them is intense. It's intense. They are grieving. And as they walk, they go back and forth trying to make sense of what had happened. In the middle of their discussion, Jesus came and walked along with them. But they were not able to recognize who Jesus was. Jesus asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They just stood there, sad and dejected, having lost the most important person in their lives. Then one of them, his name was Cleopas, said, Are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what has happened during the last few days? Of all the places, of all the places that Jesus could have been on the day of his resurrection, Jesus chooses to walk along two of his followers. Jesus chooses to meet them in their brokenness. Expect Jesus to meet you exactly, exactly where you are. For these followers of Jesus, can you imagine the emotion raging in their hearts, raging in their souls? In Jesus, they found a leader who stands for truth who reveals the true nature of God and that God is love. They were waiting. They were waiting for Jesus to establish God's kingdom. They thought Jesus was the one to redeem Israel. But just like that, just like that, Jesus is gone. And they are broken inside. In this moment, they feel that all hope is gone. Amidst their grief, Jesus asked them, what are you talking about as you walk along? Oh, they are talking about their experience with Jesus, all right, and their faith and their hope. They explained to him how the chief priests and religious leaders had Jesus arrested and condemned him to die. How they crucified Jesus on the cross. The disciples revealed that it has been three days. Three days of grief, fear, and confusion. Oh, they shared that the women went to the tomb early this morning and to find that Jesus' body was gone and God's angels sharing that Jesus is alive. And some, some of their friends had gone to the tomb and confirmed what the women said. But they did not see Jesus. At that moment, Jesus breaks into their grief, into their brokenness, explaining to them ever so gently how the Messiah had to suffer and die. It is only through this sacrifice of love that the Messiah could fulfill his destiny. Only love can raise us up from sin and death. Only love can lift up the poor from their poverty. Only love can help us realize that we are all children of God. Only love can heal us 
and make us whole. Oh, Jesus sees the grief of Cleopas and his friend. In his compassion, Jesus started to teach them. Jesus breaks down the scripture, you know, from Moses to the prophets and the Psalms. Jesus uses scripture from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, where it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, by his bruises, we are healed. Jesus is reminding them that the prophets foretold that it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer before being glorified. When the disciples reached their home, Jesus gave the impression that he was going further. But... But the disciples are so taken with this stranger, they invite Jesus to come and stay with them. They say to Jesus, stay with us. Stay with us. The sun is setting and darkness is at hand. The sun is setting. And darkness is at hand. Darkness is at hand in our world today. Jesus enters their home and stay with them. As they gather for their evening meal, Jesus takes the bread. He blesses the bread. He breaks the bread. Then he gave them the bread. As Jesus shares the bread with them, suddenly, suddenly, they recognize Jesus. The eyes of both are open. The disciples recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Yes, yes, it is Jesus. It is their Jesus, and it is our Jesus. In that moment, Jesus go goes from guest to host. Their Jesus, in the breaking of the bread, breaks back the, brings back the memories. The remembrance of Jesus breaking bread with the disciples while he was alive. Do this. Do this in remembrance of me. St. John's, do this. Do this every time we gather to celebrate the Eucharist. Do this in remembrance of me. This is how Jesus makes himself known. This moment with Jesus links the Jesus who the disciples followed and the Jesus we believe in and the Jesus we believe in. My sisters and brothers, I am here to remind you that the presence of God is with you in this moment. The presence of God is with you in this moment. Joseph Pollard writes, I learned a lesson about the presence of God from this story. He says, I learned that Jesus is always with me. Even when his presence is hidden from me. The Emmaus story is, of course, from Luke's point of view, a proof story of the resurrection of Jesus. That was Luke's intention in recording it in his gospel. But the story speaks equally to our pastoral need today. It is not only an assurance of the resurrection, 
but an assurance of God's abiding presence with us. In an age in which God is said to have been missing. This story serves to remind us that God is always present in our lives. Jesus is aware of the two disciples and of their pain even before he comes physically into their journey. Jesus is present with us in the Eucharistic liturgy that unites us to him as one body. My brothers and sisters, we serve a God of hope. We serve a God of hope. We know that Jesus kept his promise to the disciples for in John's gospel, Jesus promised that he is going ahead to prepare a place for each one of us. Jesus promised that he would come back to take us with him. And so, we look to the future in hope. We look forward to the time when we will meet our Jesus face to face. Amen? Amen? And so we live. We live for the day when we will meet our Jesus and Jesus will say to us, welcome home. Welcome home. This, this is the hope that makes this life worth living. We live in hope of our future glory. As we worship today in word and sacrament, we can shout with confidence that Jesus has been raised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can shout in confidence that Jesus lives among us. So don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Your future your future is in God's hands. Jesus, stand among us at the breaking of the bread. Join us as one body as we worship you, our head, O oh Lord. Oh, Jesus, we love you. So we gather here. Join our hearts in unity. And please, please, take away our fear. Let the church say, Amen. Amen.